A really important aspect of tkinter is toggling widgets. What that means in practice is something like this. We have a label and I want to toggle it, meaning I'm switching it on or off or visible or invisible, whatever you want to call it. This is actually quite simple if you know what you're doing in tkinter. So let's talk about it. Inside of tkinter, you don't really hide or show widgets. Instead, what you're doing is you're removing or adding widgets to the layout. Chances are you already know how to add widgets. This either happens with pack, grid, or place. But all of these methods also have the opposite. For example, for the pack method, we have pack forget. And this one does the opposite of the pack method. It removes a widget. All of this can also be done while the app is running. And if you know how to use it, you can hide and show widgets quite easily. I already have a couple of lines of code ready. I am importing tkinter, I am creating a window, and I'm running the entire thing. So this is what we're getting. But now we have to cover a couple of things. For every single layout method, we have to look at the actual layout method and how to do the opposite. And let's get started with the place method. This one I think is the easiest one to understand. We first of all have to create a button. Let me call it TTK and button with the window being the parent and the text is going to be toggle label. Finally, this one is going to get a command that I'm going to call toggle label place. We're going to create this one right away under the place method. So all of this is a bit easier to put together. Toggle place method, no need for parameters. And for now, I'm just going to add pass in here. Finally, I want to add the button and let's use the place method for that. Since the button isn't going to do anything besides being clicked on, the position here doesn't matter. Let's go with X being 100 and Y being 50. So now if I run the entire thing, in the top left, we have a button. Although I guess it's a bit too far down, let's change this to 10 and 10. Like so, now we have a button in the top left that I can click on, but nothing is going to happen. To make something happen, we need another widget. I'm going to call this one label, but it's going to work with any widget. And in here, I want to create TTK label with the parent being the window and the text is going to be a label. And this label I want to place in the center of the window, which means label.place relative x is going to be 0 0.5, relative y is going to be 0 0.5, and the anchor is going to be the center. Let me fix my typo really quick. And if I run this, now in the middle of the window, we have a label. What I now want to do is if I click on toggle label, this label should either be hidden or shown. I'm going to start by simply making this label disappear. This is going to happen inside of this function. To achieve that, all we have to do is get the label and then place for get. This is going to remove this label here and well, then we can't see it anymore. So now if I click on toggle label, the label disappears. Although the problem is if I click on it again, nothing is going to happen because well, we can only really forget it once. This doesn't work a second time. But the basic logic is in place here. We have a widget that's visible in the first place and then we make it invisible. But to make this actually interesting, we want to have a proper toggle functionality. And for that, I want to create another variable. I call this one label visibility. By default, this one is simply a Boolean value of true. This I want to update inside of this function, which means this needs to be a global variable. So global label visibility. I should probably rename this a tiny bit. Let's call it label visible. That is making much more sense. And essentially what I want to do, if I'm clicking this button, I'm going to check if the label is visible or not, which means if label visible, if that is the case, I want to forget this label. Besides that, I also want to get label visible and set it to false. Once I have that, I can create an else statement. And now if I'm running this function here, I know the label is not visible because label visible is false. If that is the case, I want to set label 
visible back to true. Finally, all I have to do is run this method here again. I am reattaching the label to the window or to any kind of container. This would also work with frames, which means I can simply copy this entire line here, paste it in there. And now if I run the entire thing, I can click on toggle label, the label disappears, and I can click on it multiple times. And now we'll make it appear or disappear. And this is basically all you need to toggle a label or literally any kind of widget. So for example, this label here could also be a button. Now we have a button and this one would still work just fine. Although I'm going to keep it being a label. And this is the basic logic that you have to understand. Besides place, we also have grid. So let's work with this one next. I now want to work on the grid. For this one, first of all, we have to create a couple of rows and columns, which means I want to get my window and run column configure. I want to have two rows, zero and one, that have the same weight. Let's go with one. And I also want to set uniform to A, so they are the same size, like so. Besides that, I am duplicating the entire line and change the column to a row. Although I only want to have a single row, so this isn't going to be a tuple, it's just going to be a zero. With that in place, I want to create a label and a button. Exactly the same thing I have done here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to copy all of this and paste it in here and uncomment the entire thing. The button is going to be basically identical. The only thing that's going to change is I'm not going to use place. Instead, I'm going to use grid. The button is going to be in column zero and row zero. For the label, I still have label visible being set to true. I am creating a label, but I'm not using the place method to place it. Instead, I'm going to use grid. The label I'm going to place in column being one and row being zero. If I run the entire thing now, we are getting an error that we are using a function that doesn't exist right now. Let me remove it and run the entire thing again. There we go. We have toggle label right next to e label. Although nothing is going to happen if I click on the button. For that, we have to create the command once again. This one is going to be toggle label, except now we're using grid. The basic logic here is going to be the same as in place. But let's create the function itself. Define, I called this one toggle label grid. No need for parameters. And then here, we are going to do the same thing we have done up here. But for good practice, let's do it from scratch. And if you want to practice yourself, try to do all of this yourself. All you need here are grid and grid forget. But in my case, I want to start by creating global label visible. That way we can change this variable here from inside of the function. If the label is visible, I want to get my label and I want to run grid underscore forget. Besides that, I want to set label visible to true. This we can already test. If I run the entire thing now and I click on toggle label, the label disappears. Although if I click on it a second time, nothing is going to happen. That is the functionality we have to work on right away. So else I want to set label visible back to true. And then I have to run this grid method here one more time. So I can just copy it, paste it in here, and now this should be working. Let's try. If I now click on toggle label, the label disappears. If I click again, nothing is going to happen. So something went wrong. I can already see the problem. This label visible here should be false. Now let's try it again. If I click on toggle label, it disappears. If I click again, it reappears. This is looking really good. Cool. With that, we have the grid method. And this basically works in the same way that this place method here is going to work. And both of those are working really well because the layout isn't really affected by other widgets. So where we are placing the label isn't really affected by the placement of the button. Each of those either have their unique positions, like in place, or their own unique cells, like in the grid. This is going to be different for the final layout method, and this is going to be for pack. For this one, once again, I want to copy the button and the label, 
place them in here and uncomment them. And those I simply want to place using the pack method. Also, let me get rid of this command here, so we're not getting an error. If I run the entire thing now, we get the two widgets right next to each other. What is really important to understand here is that the position of this label is influenced by this button. The pack method always places widgets on top of each other. And this is kind of a problem when we're using pack for get. Let me demonstrate and then you're going to see how this is going to work. Although I want to make some changes. This button I want to have all the way at the bottom of the window. So I'm going to pack it after the label and the label I am going to set to expand to cover the entire window. If I run the entire thing now, the label is basically in the middle of the window and the button is all the way at the bottom. Now we can work with this. If I press on the button, I want to run a function, which means I have to use command again and I want to toggle label pack. For this, we have to create another function, toggle label pack. Once again, no need for parameters. And in here, I can already demonstrate what the problem is going to be. If I simply run label and pack or get, try to predict what is going to happen. But, well, let me run the entire thing. And now if I click on toggle label, the button is going to be all the way at the top. The reason being that originally the label covered all of this space and then the button was placed at the bottom here. But since we got rid of the label, this entire thing here disappeared and the button is now all the way at the top. And this is going to be a problem that we have to account for. And accounting for that is going to be your exercise. What I want you guys to do is to fix the code so that the button stays at the bottom. Pause the video now and try to figure this one out. As a tip here, try to use a widget that is by default invisible. Righty, this solution here is if I run the entire thing again. By default, we have two widgets. We have a label and we have a button with the label taking up this entire space here. What I want to do is create a third widget and this one is going to cover the same space as the label, although it is not going to have any content. This could either be a frame or a label without any text. Both would be fine. In my case, I'm going to work with a frame. And this frame is only going to be placed when the label is invisible. That way, the button has something to be stacked below. But let's implement all of this step by step. First of all, I want to create another widget. This is going to be the frame. This is simply going to be TTK and frame. And the parent here is going to be the window. We're not going to place this one right away. Instead, inside of the toggle label pack function, I want to once again set the label visible as a global variable. And now I can use the if statement again. If the label is visible, then I want to pack forget the label. I also have to set label visible to false. But now what I also want to do is to get the frame and pack this one. On top of that, since the frame is supposed to take up the entire space that the label has taken, I want to set expand to true. So expand is going to be true. And now if I run this, I can click on toggle label and we have the same problem. And the issue here right now is when we are placing the widgets, this label here comes as number one and then we are placing the button number two. So in the original widget, we had the label something like this position, and then we had the button below, this position here. And the button moved all the way to the top once we removed this label here. The problem now is that once we're adding this frame with the pack method, we are adding it below the button. So the label is going to be here, which for our purposes is not going to be useful we have to find some kind of method to place the frame on top of the button. And this we can do quite easily because the pack method has another useful feature. That is called before. We can tell the frame method to pack a widget before a certain other widget. 
the widget we want to pack the frame before is the button. And now if I run this again, I can click on toggle label and the button stays all the way at the bottom. The reason for it is that now we have created this frame here and packed it before the button. So it is going to be in this position. If you play around with this, this should become fairly obvious. Although most of the time when you're hiding or showing widgets, you want to use either place or grid because this tends to get a tiny bit more complicated. But let's finish it and then we can wrap up this video. I want to have else. I first of all want to get the frame again and now run pack or get. This frame should only be there when the label is not visible. Once the label is visible, it is going to take up the entire space of this frame. Which means I also have to get the label back, which I'm doing with the pack method. And this one needs expand being true. And also we have to use before again. I want to have this label before the button. And finally, label visible is going to be true. Let's run this one. And now if I click on toggle label, this one is working really good. So with that, we can toggle widgets. Hope that was helpful.